As people, we are obsessed with equality. You can see this on an individual level and also on a social level. After all, most human rights movements are about this. But what if only our ego is what is concerned with equality? And more than that, what if equality is complete illusion? Your ego is essentially nothing more than self-concept. It is your concept of yourself as an individualized and defined self. It is I, me, and mine. Anything you identify with will become a part of your ego. The process of socialization teaches us that there are certain things that are good to be and certain things that are bad to be. And if you are those things that are bad to be, there are consequences that most of us are not willing or capable of facing. And this is where your blind spots come in. You tend to be unaware of or suppress from your conscious mind any aspects of self that you would see as bad. Because ego is a differentiation between self and other, it can only exist in a state of comparison. We have learned that to be less than others in any way is bad. We have learned it leads to things that threaten not only our self-esteem, but also our well-being and ability to get what we desire. It makes our self-concept negative and makes us feel prevented from what we want. For example, let's say that we have a job as a model and we want to get a particular show for a particular company. If we walk in the door and we see another model and we perceive that model to be more attractive than us, or if the company is giving us the impression that they perceive that model to be more attractive than us, then we will instantly feel a decrease in our self-concept. Not only that, we will perceive ourselves to be prevented from what we want. After all, we want the job. We don't want them to get the job. It's understandable because this dynamic causes such extreme pain. Why then we begin to fight for equality and more than that, superiority. The human ego cannot stand to perceive itself as less than something. We perceive this to be a threat, not only to our sense of self, but also to our capacity to get what it is that we are wanting. So it begins this very subconscious mission to knock anything that we see as higher than us, better than us, off of its pedestal, and to try to find a higher pedestal than it. We don't just fight for equality, we fight for superiority. The entire multi-billion dollar tabloid industry is built on this dynamic. It makes us feel equal to or better than the stars that because of their significance, fame, money, or looks, we feel unequal to. One thing that we have to see is that we only care about equality when we feel less than something. If we feel superior to something else, we are not going to fight for equality. We don't actually care. In fact, you have to identify with the demographic that is currently being treated as inferior in order for you to care about the equality of that particular demographic. In other words, you only care about equality because you don't want anything to be higher than you or anything you identify with. Besides, I'm going to call out another human shadow. So often you see people who are in the superior position fighting for the equality of people who they believe to be inferior to them only because they enjoy the superiority of their morality. For example, so many people fight for equality for the poor, but in actuality they don't see the poor as equal. After all, they're not the sort of people who would clean those toilets or clean those floors. One of the hardest things about being a spiritual teacher is that we have to teach about the universe. The universe is multidimensional. And in a multidimensional universe, different truths exist at different dimensions in this universe. And often these truths are contradictory. At the highest dimensional level of truth, we are all made out of the same energy, regardless of whether it's a table or a person or a dog or a tree or the bed you slept on last night. This means that ultimately, because you are made of the same energy and that is imbued with the same collective consciousness, at that highest level, we're all one. So equality is a bit of an understatement. But as this consciousness becomes a part of the physical dimension, this consciousness chooses to become separated and defined and polarized. Because of this, as much as our ego does not like it, the reality of physical life is that we are not all equal. The thing that we are most concerned with when it comes to equality is being valued. We want to be valued equally. We want to be treated equally because we are valued equally. But here's the thing. As long as you live in a time-space reality and a dimension where value is dependent upon needs, perspectives, and preferences, nothing's ever going to be equal. 
For example, in a time of war, a diamond or ruby has no value whatsoever. A bottle of alcohol, on the other, has tons of value because of need. If a woman wants to be financially taken care of, that's her need and therefore what she values, and a rich man and the most emotionally available man in the world walks through the door, the woman will value the rich man. An employee's needs will not be treated as equal to the needs of a CEO because, quite frankly, a company can afford to lose and replace a worker. They cannot afford to lose and replace a CEO. You want your perspective to matter as much as anyone else's in any given circumstance, but it doesn't. If someone meditated on a mountain for 20 years, your opinion about meditation would not matter as much as theirs. It would be inferior. In my line of work, the best engineer would be absolutely useless. In an engineering process, my information would be absolutely useless. For thousands of years, women could not hold property. What this meant is that society valued boys. And as an extension of society, parents valued boys. If your need was to have a successor and to have an heir, a girl simply could not fulfill those needs, so a boy would be valued higher. The perception of inequality can and does lead to horrible, horrible things. Whites saw blacks as unequal, and therefore blacks were kept as slaves and hung from trees. The figure skater Tanya Harding saw Nancy Kerrigan as superior, and therefore initiated an incident where Nancy was hit in the leg with a pipe before U.S. nationals. But it is not equality we need to be fighting for. Equality is not a reality in the realm of physicality, where needs and personal preference exist. What we need to be fighting for is three things. The first is love. But what is love? To love is to take something as part of yourself. Now, if whites could have taken blacks as part of themselves, they couldn't have hung them from trees without feeling the impact of doing so within their own body as if it was happening to them. When we love something, we do what is best for that thing. We don't prevent it from what it wants. We help it get what it wants. We also have an understanding of the perspective of whatever it is that we see as other. The second thing we need to be fighting for is awareness. Question everything. Look at the perspectives and angles on everything so that what we can do is to arise at a higher truth. Doing this means we transcend our ignorance. Doing this means we transcend our illusion. Doing this means we transcend our prejudice. For example, women are still paid less than men by a shocking percentage around the world. Instead of focusing on this being a matter of fighting for women to be equal to men, we need to collectively question why the hell this is the case. We need to become aware of all the perspectives and angles so as to arrive at what changes need to take place within our minds and within society. 3. Each individual needs to stop focusing on where he or she is inferior and instead start to focus on and express the very unique intrinsic values that make that person not only equal, but superior. <laughs> if we could do these three things, the negative manifestations that arise out of the perception of inequality would not actually manifest. They wouldn't occur. Now, it may seem strange for someone like me, a spiritual teacher, to come here and say, the concept of superiority, inferiority, or even equality is a matter of the ego, and then tell you, focus on your superiority. Why am I not teaching you simply to disidentify instead? Here is why I'm doing it. As much as you may want to, you can never get rid of your ego. You will have an ego as long as you hold a perspective that is differentiated. If you introduce yourself by one name, you have an ego. The more intrinsic value you see in yourself for your own unique superiority is the less you will care about your deficiencies. The less you care about your deficiencies, the more secure you are in terms of self-concept. The more secure you are in terms of self-concept, the less you will create the incredible manifestations of suffering that arise from insecurity relative to inequality. When you are willing to live your life according to your unique intrinsic value, i.e. gifts, your purpose falls into your lap. When you can see the intrinsic value in others, you can lead them to their purpose instead of forcing them to try to improve their deficiencies so as to suit your needs. We believe that inequality is wrong. We believe everything and everyone should be equal. Well, that is when we're not in the superior position. <laughs> but here's the reality. We aren't equal. Equality is complete illusion. Equality is a judgment based on perceptual reality. In a world of differentiation, sameness does not exist. Men do not give birth to children. 
If a man was to expect himself to nurse a child, he would find himself inferior to women, therefore unequal. Men have profound physical advantages. If women were to compete against men in sports where those physical advantages really did make a difference, women would find themselves to be inferior, therefore unequal. One person may suck at math but be amazing at writing. One person may have had every advantage in terms of education and finances in life but be terrible at forming relationships. We need to be brave enough to accept that inequality is the absolute reality of life. We need to accept that our inequalities actually point to our purpose in life. We need to accept that any inferiority that we feel embarrasses us to such an extreme degree that we don't even allow our own conscious mind to admit to when we are feeling inferior. So we subconsciously carry out all kinds of things that cause suffering based on the fact that we are unwilling to admit that what's really going on with us is that we feel inferior in this moment. We also need to accept that superiority is considered not okay in society today. It's especially not politically correct. So this means that even though you have plenty of areas in which you feel completely superior to others, you can't admit it to your conscious mind. So you can't do anything about it, can you? Ask yourself and honestly admit to where you feel superior and where you feel inferior. Feel how much this topic and episode triggers you. Ask yourself, why does it trigger you so much? If I am inferior to this person or thing, why would that be so bad? Equality is an illusion. It is something that the ego has created. It is a figment of your imagination and you're not going to be able to make things equal in this world. Therefore, we need to stop fighting for equality. What we need to fight for is love, awareness, and intrinsic value instead. Have a good week. Yeah.